but we kind of mentioned a little bit about uh, Kadarius Tony in the beginning of the show. Um, we're getting more people talking about uh, Tony in our uh, comments here. But um, for me, I'm not really knowing much about Kadarius Tony outside of seeing his college highlights and seeing the few games that he tore it up with the Giants. I thought he was a kind of like just, just a gadget guy, right? Like a guy who kind of could do it all. But that ball he caught where he high pointed it. I mean, while while adjusting his gloves and then midair going to k- catch it. And I also love his uh, touchdown celebration. I don't know if he was uh, paying homage to having a hamstring injury by by hopping into the end zone on one leg and then pretending he, had, like, he hurt his hamstring. I, I thought that was fantastic that he did that because, uh, you know, maybe he's paying homage to his Giants days where, you know, he, some were saying that he faked the hamstring injury to get out of there. But I don't know. Um, what, what do you guys make of Kadarius Toney? Um, and is he what you expected or is he more than what you expected so far? I tell you what, that that play going up to catch the ball, high point in like that, that was a phenomenal play. It really was. That that showed me that he's so much more than what I expected. To be honest with you, seriously, because he, he he went between two guys to go get that ball. Uh, you know, also stepping on the sideline, you know, just kind of you know tight roping. He, he's got that speed. It, you, look, you've seen him in college, and you've seen some of the things that you know he has about him. But he showed without a doubt, how much of a weapon he really is. And Vegas Chiefs fans like getting Tony was a great – Is a it, now, it was a that, – shoot, that was probably the best move we made in a long time, getting a guy like that. Seriously. I mean, he's he's, he's a phenomenal player, man. Phenomenal player. And, and at the right time, too, when you have something like his juju goes down, and you had to be like, oh, well, who we have? Now we got to push for somebody else. And I said this wasn't necessarily a knock on Sky Moore's development. I just think there was a guy that was coming here who was already a little bit more refined. Right, who's already been in the league? Who's already seen, you know, some of these defenses, some of these guys, and he already knew how to compete. And so I like it. He's excited. You can just tell he's excited playing in this offense. This is offense geared for a guy with his skill set, without a doubt, no doubt about it, man. So you know, he's he's having fun. We giving him on jet sweeps around the corner. I mean, it's hey, shoot, this this is what he's made for. Seriously. I, w- I want to hear what Lance has to say here. Because Lance wasn't as excited as a lot of people were about this when we first did it. He he was still. Oh. He was still calling for OBJ. I don't know if he changed his tune after what he saw today. Lance, I'm going to give you the floor. I heard the news uh, when I was just getting back in town in Kansas City a couple, a few weeks ago when the Chiefs traded for Kadarius Toney. They didn't give up a bunch, but I wasn't expecting a bunch. I, I, I'm i somebody that, what, what have you done for me lately? I know the college tape looked good. Dude's got talent, all that fun stuff. But you have Brian Dable up there that's an offensive genius, and he didn't want him. And he was willing to get up, give, get rid of him for a couple conditional picks. That worried me. That worried me very much. And furthermore, it worried me that he was, was he going to be a guy that was going to want to come in here and play a role as opposed to try to be the guy? That was something I was worried about. Those I felt those were legitimate concerns based upon what we had seen and heard coming out of New York and his injury concerns. There was a legitimate concern about that as well. I didn't think he was going to be special. But I'm here to tell you guys right now, and I'm not telling you anything you haven't seen for yourselves, Kadarius Tony is special. Let's go. I'm not saying this, dude. Listen. <laughs> there is no replacing Tyreek Hill. Let's clarify that right now. There is one Tyreek Hill. You're not ever replacing that dude. He is one of one. But Kadarius Tony is as close as the Chiefs could get at replacing Tyreek Hill because of his twitchiness, because of his playmaking ability. You saw it on full display today. High pointing the ball, creating with his feet on the side on the on the end of the sideline over there. The way this guy has such composure and wherewithal with his body and playing the game at a fundamental level the way he does, it's something that the Chiefs absolutely needed. I'm telling you guys right now, the Chiefs already won that trade. That that trade is yeah. already won. Oh, what he's done to this point already. He's not putting up magnificent stats by any means, but he's adding a dimension the Chiefs have not had since losing Tyreek Hill. Has the offense been awesome since Tyreek Hill left? Yes. They're still the best offense in football. But Tony adds that next-level playmaking ability the Chiefs just simply don't have because they lost an all-time great in Tyreek Hill. So there's no replacing Tyreek. But, guys, you don't have to replace Tyreek when you have a Kadarius Tony. You can have a one-on-one of somebody else. You don't have to go and get a replica to still go and get a guy that can be effective at a high level. Guys, the Chiefs have won this trade. I was somebody that was very, very, um, I guess you would say skeptical about that trade. I am no longer skeptical. Guys, now I'm expecting Kadarius Toney to be a legitimate a legitimate contributor to this offense moving forward. I had no expectations. Now I got a ton. And his his ability to do what he does gave me the reason to do that. I'm all I'm on Team Tony. I'm calling him Tony Touchdown. And he 100% Uh-oh. 
100% trolled the Giants on that little hammy, that little jump thing he was doing. He knew what he was doing, and I thought it was amazing. I'm, I'm here for it, man, because he's a chief, and he's going to help this team win another Super Bowl. So are you out on OBJ? No, I'm not, because I still Ooh. think that the Chiefs – here's the thing. <laughs> I, I know I'm giving praise to Tony here, but here's the thing that OBJ is still going to bring to this team if the Chiefs – and according to everything we're hearing, the Chiefs are still in the mix. Will they get him? Probably not. He'll probably go to another thing. But here's here's some factors about OBJ that the Chiefs fit the criteria for. One, he can play a legitimate role in this team still because there's the juju factor right now. We don't know if he'll be out for any length of time. But even if he does, his style fits this offense perfectly. He's a veteran receiver that has playoff experience, Super Bowl experience that can add to this offense. And again, as I talked to J.D. earlier about the offensive line and the trenches, guys get injured. Injuries happen all the time. And I still stand on what I said about the difference of having OBJ getting snaps or Justin Watson. We like Justin Watson, but let's be real. We'd rather have OBJ getting those snaps than Justin Watson. That just adds to your depth. Second of all, OBJ's mentality has changed. We all know this dude was a playboy, man. He lived in New York. You know, he's played in L.A. This dude's a handsome guy. He likes to go out and do his thing. He hangs out with celebrities. He's 30 years old now. He's got a family. And his agent has mentioned multiple times that he wants to plant his roots somewhere. Well, the Chiefs have been creating cap space and are going to have anywhere from 80 to 100 plus million in cap space next year. If he wants a multi-year deal, Chiefs can give him an MVS type of deal, get him a two-year deal with a third-year option, 12, 13 million a year, and the Chiefs can absolutely afford that. I'm not saying it's going to happen. What I'm saying is it still makes sense for both sides for it to happen because both sides give that other side something they both want. A better chance of winning a Super Bowl and a guy adding to his resume to get in the Hall of Fame, get his, plan, his, his, his roots planted, and a city in a town where he can win games and settle down in a city and it's a place that would and, and absolutely embrace him because of who he is and what he's all about. I know he gets a bad rep for who he was in New York. That dude is loved by every teammate he has ever had. I have not heard one bad thing from him uh, from a former teammate about OBJ. People love that dude and I know he would be loved here in Kansas City. So there's my little pitch. Maybe we can clip this and send it to OBJ and we'll see what, he, what it'll do. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you this, man. I, I just... You know, Tony coming out today and showing what he he, he showed, uh, I think really put the OBJ uh, debate to bed for me, really. I mean, seriously. I, and, and I wasn't really high on OBJ. I mean, yeah, we could have used him, but we knew we wouldn't have him until December, mid-December, yeah. you know, at least coming out here to play the games. So uh, you got this young electric guy in Tony. You know, he's a first-round pick. I mean, he's a first-round pick for a reason, right? And so I, I, I just think – right now, the integrity of the guys that you have. And we might not be able to see Tony unless Hardman was hurt. We, we might not even see everything, you know, today as far as, like, what Tony was able to show without yeah. Hardman being out. So now you're talking about MBS, MBS, you got Juju, you got Hardman, you got Tony, you got, you got Sky Moore. So you got guys. We we got, got the Travis Kelsey, you know, Noah Gray stepped up. We got We got – receivers we got tight ends we got running backs we got guys catching football and we got the best arm in the business uh in Patrick Mahomes so I, I just think sometimes you know because there's only one ball that could go around right and Paul and he's he's peppering at different places he really is now I'm sure OBJ would love to come here right I mean he's got Kelsey and all these guys he got super superstars already on the team uh and you know OBJ still a playboy he's still a pretty boy no doubt about it. He's a wide receiver. Ain't, ain't nothing gonna change about that. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just not. So, uh, you know, hey, look, if it works, you know, for the right price, maybe that, that's that's the only way. But that, to me, as far as uh, it, you find the right fit, you get the guy in. I think, to to be honest with it, Tony fits that mold, right? He's a young guy. He's one of those that you like, who's who's ready to play with Patrick Mahomes, who's ready to do well on a team like this. Uh, and I think a lot of it was just being disrun up there in, in New York. I think that's what it was, you know, because you got Galladay up there. None of them guys, they're grumbling around for the past few years. They ain't been good, what, how long? I mean, shoot, yeah. forever. And so I think he just, he, he was in a bad situation. He just really wanted to get out of there. I know that what, what he was given, it, it just couldn't change the taste in your mouth. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, you you know, you might have, you know, just bad food for a long time. It's like, hey, you know what? Hey, I'm gonna give you this new uh, uh, this new meal. He's like, ah, you know what? None of it tastes good. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I, I, I appreciate it, but we gotta go. We gotta go change and, and check a new restaurant out. I, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. So that's the way I look at it. Uh, maybe because he just wanted to get out of that situation, which I understand. I, I completely understand. They're winning now, right? The things that they're doing, but still, the wide receiver is still something to be desired. Somewhat of it. I mean, Daniel Jones is kind of up and up. 
Shoot, if I had the chance to go play with, you know, uh, Daniel Jones and Patrick Mahomes, I'd be wanting to get that bad at Joker too. Believe, <laughs> believe, believe me. So yeah. uh, I just think, man, you know, OBJ, uh, you know, is he a luxury to have? Yeah, no doubt about it. He just, but man, Tony, what he showed today solidified it for me like, yo, this guy right here is electric. He could do all those things. He's a young guy who's excited to be here. Not saying OBJ won't be, but I think when you have a young talent like that, that kind of rely on each other, I think it makes it just for a, good, a better mix, better chemistry as far as the team-wise. Yeah. And he only knows like that much of the playbook. I mean, what, the, only a couple of weeks, and he's and he's doing this and only knowing that much of the playbook. I mean, yeah. I, I think sky's the limit for him, really, in this offer. Yeah. yeah. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, Subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get podcasts.